much, Adrian, for being here, for accepting this interview and just for sharing with us your knowledge and your experience. And yeah, I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm also happy to be here. Yeah, so I was um, thinking maybe you can start by introducing yourself and let us know a bit about you and where you're from and, and also what you're doing right now. Sure. So I am Adrian Tekka. I'm a software engineer from Las Vegas. Um, I've been working in several smaller companies here in Vegas pretty much my whole career. And now I'm currently a senior developer advocate at MongoDB. So that's the quick spiel. <laughs> so the purpose of this channel actually is to talk about the careers and give other people also insights from professionals about their careers and how they started and, and what do they actually do. So in your case, I really would like to know what it is, um, what is a software developer, what does a software developer do? What do you do every day? Um, what's your purpose and your career? And like, what does it mean to be a software developer? That is a great question. I think from all the different jobs that I've done, there's a, a few things that stay the same no matter which industry you're in uh, or you know what level you are at but i fully believe that being a software developer is just a lot of reading and a lot of learning <laughs> so i'm sure everyone knows that uh, if they start looking into a career about this or are you know starting out themselves uh, you know that there's so many things to learn. So there's not just programming. There's not just, um, you know, different technologies and uh, what's happening in your industry. There's so many things that go into it. And all of that comes back to reading. You're reading how to do something. You're reading more information on how a process is done in a certain industry. You're reading about trends in e-commerce. Like everything is just learning and reading. So even though we like to think of uh, being a software developer as just, you know, coding all day and uh, it's peaceful, nobody's talking to you, it's quite different. Uh, you actually, those are the nice days. You have some days like that where you get to just code and really focus. But before you get to that point, um, there's a lot of reading involved. You know, you need, to, you need to be accustomed with the information. You need to understand what it is you're about to code or fix. And uh, if there's something that you don't know, then there's a lot of research that goes involved too, right? There's Stack Overflow, there's reading documentation, there's reading tickets. Um, so a lot of it, I would say, is, is reading and learning, even more so than actual coding. So uh, I think in, in your experience, you would say, if you would like to be a software developer, then you have to be prepared to be reading all the time, be learning all the time. It's not like it's not this kind of career that you you learned a craft or you you decided to graduate from something and then you just know how to do it because you are going to always be encountering some some challenges and and probably speaking to a lot of people. I, I don't know. Like in your case, is there also a moment where you have to speak to other developers so they can also help you this like just um, know something? Absolutely. That's, I think that's a mark of a good team. So um, it's necessary. And, uh, you know, when you're working on something, you should always never be afraid to, to ask for help. So for example, when you're first starting out, you're not going to know everything about the system that you're about to be working on. So it's obvious, you know, you're going to be talking to your coworkers at some point just to get onboarded, to learn what's happening. But even as you become more familiar and accustomed, and maybe you've been working on this system for a while, you're not working in isolation. You're always talking to somebody, whether that's hey, you know, why did we choose to do this particular thing in our platform? Uh, there's like a better way to do it. Or, you know, you talk to someone when you're thinking of fixing something, you hopefully, and I advise it, uh, that you talk to your team about it. You say, what do we do? What is the best scenario for it? Because everybody has a different perspective. There's, yes, there's a senior engineers or the people who have been there longer and who are more familiar with the platform that might be able to give you some insight as to how that works. But then you have the people who 
are not in the weeds who have not been in it all the time and they bring a fresh perspective to it so they say okay well sure it's maybe it's always been done this way but what about trying this new thing or what have, have we ever thought about it in this way so yes absolutely i i think it's a mark of a good team that before you even get to coding it's always good to collaborate talk to each other and help each other when you are working in a software development team great so maybe also you can tell us um why you decide to, decided to become a, a software developer like what was this moment if there was actually one particular moment <laughs> like how how was this moment for you or what what were the the things that that um resonated with you and and that made you decide to go um and pursue the path absolutely um i want to make it very clear that i was not I was not one of those that was like coding at 10 or something you know i didn't have any uh figures that were showing me early on or introduced me to it um i wasn't into it in fact my only exposure to computers was really computer games so uh, i loved age of empires 2 roller coaster tycoon 2 that was and obviously to get on to uh, aol for aim right to chat uh, <laughs> so you can calculate my age there but um, so that was my only exposure uh, when I was younger. Um, so I want to make that very clear that uh, just because I didn't have that, that early start and wasn't exposed to it before doesn't mean that I didn't um, fall into it afterwards. I think a lot of people have this misconception that you need to have that, um, that uh, you know, you need to know that you like it very early on for you to succeed. And that's not the case at all. It's in, I'm an example of that. So I would feel the moment that I actually knew this was the career for me was actually not until very late into my uh, college years. So I was in my software development internship, which even when I applied for that internship, the only reason I applied for it was because it paid very well <laughs> and uh, yeah, it helped pay for um, a few credits of my uh, degree. So I'm like, of course, I will try this job. You know, that's the best as a student. I'm like, of course, I will do this one. I don't care if it's nice. I yeah. just I'm like, I don't care what I'm doing. It's paying for my school. I will do it. So I did it and I luckily got into it. But I feel very lucky that I did get into it because uh, maybe halfway through that internship, when I actually started talking with my team and getting mentored by some of my um, colleagues, uh, I, I think two very important things happened there. Number one, I, I got it and my whole team was actually full of uh, women engineers, software senior women engineers. And it's funny because after that internship i never again had a team like that i was the only woman so <laughs> i know it's weird um but so i think that was a very big influence because i never started with this notion that software engineering was just for men because the first team i started with was all women mm -hmm. and so that was a big thing for me and then the moment i knew that this was really for me that was all part of it but the moment i knew was when i got assigned my first project and I was super scared. I'm like, oh gosh, they're gonna find out that I'm not really qualified for this internship. I don't know what I'm doing. But then I really put my head down and I didn't, like I wanted to solve this problem. What I had to do was implement, um, at the time we were transferring our email system to use some, uh, the Google administration system, specifically some Google administration APIs. At the time, I had no idea what the, all those things meant. I'm like, yeah, these things work together. Like somehow. me right now. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I, I was there like, here, this is your job. You have to connect, you know, our current system to this, the, the new version of the API. I'm like, okay and looking back on it i'm like that was super simple that me for me now knowing what i know now that would have taken me maybe like two hours <laughs> but then i was like oh so i was reached but i think that that was the moment i knew that i actually enjoyed it because i was nervous i was scared i didn't know what i needed to do but i i also took it as a challenge it was like a puzzle to me and it was a problem to be solved so once i started researching started reading and doing all that i could 
to figure out how to do it. Uh, by the time I, I implemented it and figured it out, it took me maybe like a week or a week and a half to figure it out. But during that process, normal, I guess. Yeah, it, very, very normal because this was an internship, right? I didn't know anything at this point. Uh, and so yeah. it took me that long to not only read and research, but to also talk to my, my, um, my colleagues, my coworkers. Uh, and it was in that moment that I'm like, you know what, this is actually pretty fun to like figure out how to do something. So yeah. that's when I kind of took on more challenges. That's, that's when I realized I really liked the problem solving aspect of, of mm -hmm. software development. And there's so many different kinds of problems. So uh, more and more, I took on more problems, more uh, more puzzles, I like to call them for myself. And that just kind of kickstarted it for me. So as I finished that one, I was given another thing to do. And then it was kind of like the cycle repeated itself. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what that means. I don't know what those words mean. I don't know how to do this. And then research, talk to people, figure it out. And then it was always super satisfying when I actually did it. And then I'm like, oh, I, I think yeah, it was more like fun for you or exciting. It wasn't like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. It's so yeah. terrible. And what am I going to do now? Yeah. It was like, oh, cool. let me see how I was like, it may be scary, but exciting. So that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you identify with that. That's fine. Very much. Yeah, cool. So um, how would you recommend someone to start? Because um, from your story, it was actually something that happened without you um, like putting so much effort into it. You just went for an internship and it turned out to be fine and cool for you, which is amazing. But other people might think, okay, um, what if I just, before I do this and I, I, I go and start reading and researching and learning and even getting an internship. I just want to get something that I already know that I'm going to enjoy. So how would you recommend that these people can explore being a software developer or just explore um, maybe learning it or how to learn it? Like, what would you recommend? So I would say that anyone who's starting out now is actually very lucky because there are so many resources. Yeah. Like if I had these resources when I was starting out, I probably would have, you know, gone that route first and then felt more confident about the software development internship. But there are a couple ways. There, there's obviously thousands of of online courses. Um, it doesn't even have to be paid ones, right? There's so many free things. There's YouTube videos. There's, uh, you know, like your channel is great for uh, talking to actual people and seeing what is it that you do, because yeah. there's a difference between seeing like the curated version of this is what someone does. And then like this very um, raw, uh, conversational yeah. talk about this is actually what happens from a real person. So find videos like that, find blog posts that talk about it. Um, and then if you are actually interested, then maybe you can, you know, get your feet wet and do, you know, the code academies, the free code camps, uh, actually see what it is, what it means to code and see if you enjoy it. Um, a big part also that I would recommend is try to find um, like user groups there, uh, that are either online. So there's like Discord groups or Slack groups that get a lot of people together who are doing the same thing. They're interested in learning how to code or to become a software developer. And it's kind of like a community. I mean, now, you know, we're not supposed to be out, so that's the way to go. But once all of this is over, I also highly encourage you to check out any of your local user groups, those are super great for um, finding people who are in the same boat as you. You know, you, you can talk to each other about your struggles. You can talk to each other about, you know, what is it that you like or what are you interested in? And you also make those connections uh, down the line, right? Um, if you end up going all the way and seeing that uh, you want to go through this, um, they might be your job connection in the future, right? So um, I would say take advantage of all of the resources that you have at your disposal to really get a feel for what it is and then see if it's something that you 
enjoy. And I think that would be my biggest piece of advice because it, it's not for everyone. I know a lot of people, I, I don't doubt this, the sentiment that everybody can learn how to code. I truly believe that. I also believe that it is not for everyone. Some people just don't like this and that's okay. Um, you know, you don't have to be forced into it just because we're we're pushing it onto everyone and we're trying to get more people into it. But if you don't like it, that's absolutely okay. It's not for everyone. Yeah, it's totally like that. I, I think it's a career that honestly anyone can do and it's it's pretty um I would say trendy because I just saw that. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. It's like pretty yeah. cool right now. Yeah, everyone wants to just be a developer because it seems so cool and people can't even work remotely and they see themselves just developing new stuff and being so in tech and, and like inspired by all these things going on right now. However, it's what you said. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone and you really have to make sure that you know if this is the right one for you, because I also know that I, because I have been talking with other developers that it's not easy to get to be a good developer. I mean, you anyone could do it, but it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. So you, this is something that you really have to commit to. And yeah, I I, I understand what you mean completely. And also, um, I think that this part of that you mentioned about having a community and just finding people around that cannot only just um, be a community to, for supporting you, but also to give you tips on where to look. Because sometimes we're just stuck in one website, for example, and we're like, oh, this is the best, best website in the world, and I'm going to find all the information here, and that's it. And then you talk to this other friend, and they're like, come on, haven't you tried this one? Yes. And then it's like just exchanging tips and ideas and and i think it's amazing this this is really really good advice that you're giving yeah. and also for more interviews like this i just wanted to tell everyone to subscribe and hit like because we're going to keep having more of this <laughs> and also with adrian we are planning to to have more interviews like this and talk about other stuff related to, to software developers and, and the scene for you so um, maybe can you also let us know about the skills of when you started? Like um, some people are super confused about what are the skills that I'm supposed to have, even hard and soft skills. Um, like you said, maybe so, uh, hard skills are not easy, but anyone can have them. But also soft skills are something that you have to work on yourself. You have to work on your personality and the way that you do um, you, you, I don't know, like you face the challenges. So how did you identify what at the beginning you needed to, to learn? And also what would be your advice for, for people to learn at the beginning? So in the beginning, it's it's very overwhelming, right? With the, with the um, number of resources that are out there, you're like, okay, great. There's all of this to help me, but where do I start? I can totally... Uh, resonate with that feeling because even at this stage of my career if there's something new that I have to learn I feel exactly the same way I'm like okay I have to learn uh, you know Kubernetes for example I'm like I don't know where to start <laughs> so I think the first thing to to looking back um, a lot of people get really wrapped up in I have to choose the right language to start and you see it everywhere even on um, like my Instagram that's probably the majority of the questions I get in my messages is like how I want to learn how to code what language should I choose and I'm yeah. like well it depends there's no one silver perfect language that you know if you learn this language it guarantees you a high paying job I think that's what a lot of people think but that's not the case I said um, before you choose, there are things you have to take into account, like what what languages are in demand where you live, what uh, industry are you are you interested in? Like if you are interested in game development, then maybe you want to learn C sharp because that's the language of choice. With uh, you know, you can use C sharp with Unity to create games. Or if you want to be a web developer, then it's almost uh, a given that you we should probably learn JavaScript and HTML and CSS. So it's it, depending on the path that you choose and what you want to do, 
um, it's going to differ. The answer is going to differ. I can't just tell you learn C sharp and you're set. That's not it. Yeah. So I would say first really, it really try to, again, get a feel for what it is you want to do, because there's so many different options in here um, other than coding, right? You could be a graphic designer. You can work on um, gaming, uh, like story or lore. That's still a technical position, even though it's not directly related to coding. You could be, you know, there's so many options. So yeah. first, really try to see what it is you're interested in and then try to find a match uh, in the tech industry that aligns with your interests. Now, let's say, just since this is about software development, let's say you, you want to be a web developer or, um, yeah. you know, I would say learn JavaScript first. Like, <laughs> like, yes, learn HTML and CSS, but I say this more about more for the the framework wars and what i mean by that is people are like oh i need to learn react and to me that's skipping over the foundational building blocks mm -hmm. um before uh and going straight to the advanced stuff so i always tell beginners or people who are starting out learn the building blocks first learn html yeah. css javascript and once you are comfortable with it then move on to the advanced stuff you cannot mm -hmm. run before you start to learn how to walk and um so that's what i would advise is like do try to find what it is you're interested in and then try to find the foundational building blocks of that thing that you're interested in before you start moving forward as far as other skills I think those are way more important than technical skills because anybody can learn technical skills. Yeah. It's much harder to learn the other skills. And what are things that I think are important when you're starting out? You need to learn how to be comfortable with not knowing something. This was something I was very bad at in the beginning. I, you know, imposter syndrome, yes, everybody feels it at any time in their career. But also there was like this need to make sure that I wasn't seen as stupid or not knowing something. And that really hindered me in the beginning of my career because uh, what this led to was me not asking questions, was me mm -hmm. trying um, to figure things out on my own that would have taken me a lot shorter time if I had just reached out to somebody and asked. Um, so that's one thing I would say to try to practice early on is to get comfortable with not knowing something because that's going to be a constant feeling uh, as you progress in your career, um, as you have to learn new things or update uh, update what you know from before because things are changing all the time. It, you're always going to not know something. So it's better to be comfortable with that feeling now. And in tandem with that, you also need to know how to ask questions. So there are people who just, again, like me, are afraid, right? I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to ask. But you need to overcome that. You need to, you need to learn more about uh, or take into account that it's actually worse for you if you don't ask the questions now oh, yeah. all the time. It's, it's never going to hurt you. I mean, if you're asking the same question, 20 times that's a different story maybe you're either you're not get maybe the answer is not being given to you in a way that you understand so then find a different resource or you are yeah. just not comprehending it maybe you need to take a step back even further and like learn those things before you can understand the answer that's being given to you then and i also think sometimes people also need to know how to ask questions because sometimes we see that a lot and People that are starting out, they're like, um, I don't know how to do this. Yes. And they just expect the other person that is pretty busy <laughs> to just explain every single thing. Yep. So sometimes it's also good if you already start doing some research and say, I don't understand this part. Yep. Can you please help me with this? Instead of just maybe saying, um, can you explain the whole thing? And I don't, I don't understand anything. And it's like, no, no, please tell me what part you don't understand. So it's also, I guess, with the experience and, and by talking to other people and by them rejecting you sometimes like, uh, no, I'm not going to explain everything. Then you realize that there are ways of also asking questions that 
possible. And then you you don't come across as a as a I don't know anything person, but you come across as a as someone that's interested in learning more, and that's it because you you you're, they see that you're actually already learning something by yourself, and you're just asking some like the right questions. I couldn't agree more. Yes, absolutely. You said it way more eloquently than I did. But yes, it's that really is it. Um, I mean, I've had that same fair share as well, where a lot of people ask me, like, how do I code? <laughs> like, that's a very <laughs> broad question. Uh, you know? yeah. so I, I go through the same things that I ask. I'm like, what are you interested in? What city are you in? Do you know what languages are in demand there? All these kinds of things. And yes, so that is a skill. I agree that you learn with time, but if you can exercise that in the beginning, uh, you'll be better off for it. Um, the last skill that is still very, very important that I would advise everyone to learn, not just any, not just in software development um, for everything, but I guess especially in software development, is to learn how to be very compassionate in what you do. There's a lot of ego in software development and it's very, it can get really toxic, which is very, it's not, not nice. I mean, that's the reality of it. It's getting better, but there will be some situations where you encounter that, whether that's, let's say you are contributing to open source and you know, you're nervous, this is your first time. Sometimes uh, you, you might um, contribute a change. So you open a pull request against this um, open source project. And sometimes there are people who are very mean in their pull requests. They say, oh, you know, this this code is terrible or we would never accept this or something like that. And that's something you never want to do uh, when you're in software development. You need to try to understand where someone is coming from. Are they a beginner? Are they asking questions that you could actually answer? Um, you need to kind of take that ego out and kind of understand where somebody is coming from and try to put that in your perspective, either when you're helping someone or when you're um, talking to somebody. There's, yeah. I mean, the we always like to say um, with other software devs, the software development industry is very small. Uh, you, no matter what, you will, you will find someone who knows somebody who knows somebody and that will it will it will get around so if you we'll are get your karma back <laughs> very much i mean take for example just yesterday um so i just started on well, that just but i've been at mongodb now for about three months mm -hmm. and um somebody messaged me on slack randomly and was like hey i know you don't know me but i've actually been following your instagram so i'm it's actually pretty cool that you're now working at the same company as me i'm like oh that's so cool that's such a small world or another yeah. example, um, when I went to go speak at a conference like last year before all this happened, um, I met someone, his name is Sam, and he works for Auth0. And uh, so, you know, got to know him. We were both speakers at this conference. And then so he's like, so, so where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Las Vegas. He's like, no way. He's like, I know these two people who are really good friends of mine who are also in Vegas. So it's like, the point of this is that you never know who you're going to meet. And yeah. if you are a jerk uh, in your profession or you just you have you come up with a reputation as not being a nice person, not being compassionate, and feeling like you're the best and like putting others below you, it's going to get around and it's going to be known among the developer community. So try to just leave that. I mean, there's there's no point you can be confident about your skills without being a jerk about it and being yeah. uh feeling like you're better than everyone else i i feel that you really are the awesome person and can believe you are the best if you use that knowledge that you have and actually share it with other people instead of keeping it all to yourself and being like oh you don't know that i knew that you know that's that's the attitude you want to stay away from and so those or are if you just some um, i mean you're so um into that i mean you you just cannot you cannot stand people that don't know or don't have the same level of knowledge that you have then don't say anything <laughs> just walk away but don't tear down other people this is a great part 
also. Yes. But it would be nice also and better to share it and, and build things together and of course get far further away together. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. Cool. So I also want to um, let the people know that they can comment below and I really hope that Adrian can also um, answer your questions if you have any and also let us know if you like this video and of course like it again <laughs> and just comment everything that you that you want to comment below and if you have any questions or anything please go down and um, also I wanted to ask you for your advice for the aspiring software developers out there what do you think it would be something that you'd say oh just please always do this or or um, keep this in mind or I don't know just your one advice or even three if you want. Um, I mean aside from everything I've already spoken about I think the one thing that I'd like everyone to know is to just to keep pushing through it's it's going to be difficult there's going to be a lot of times where you feel like you know, this is it. This is the end of the road for me because I just don't get this thing and I'm never going to understand it. And that's it. I'm not cut out to be a software developer and don't, don't give up. I know it's very cliche. A lot of people are saying, no, you know, just keep going. But I, it's, I'm trying to level with you and be realistic that there's going to be a lot of times where you feel defeated, but don't take that as the end of your journey maybe take it as a sign of you need to take a break, go get another coffee, go to sleep, go take a walk, do something else. Because we have this tendency to like really focus and say, I need to figure out now. And if I don't figure it out now, then, you know, I'm, I'm not cut out for it or this is not the right career for me. So if there's anything that I think would resonate with anyone who's learning this, it's just don't give up and don't don't internalize that because you don't understand something the first time or the second time that uh, that this isn't the thing for you. Just give it a break, come back to it, and maybe it will take you a couple times. Maybe it will take you different resources to learn it, but eventually if you keep pushing at it and if you really are interested and like it then there will be a time where you solve that problem and you will learn it and then you will feel so much more satisfied that you um kept going and finally learned that thing so just keep going yeah totally and i also i wanted to ask you one thing that i forgot to ask you it's how long did it take for you to really feel confident and say oh I i'm a good software developer now i guess i i can go and find a job or or that you just felt confident because some people are super desperate in becoming already a software developer. They want the job in three months. I'm going to be this amazing software developer. And it's like, okay. So, um, how do you, do you think you could say like, maybe it's going to take you this amount of time if you really put effort into it, like spending this amount of hours a day and be really focused. Could you, do you think you could stay uh, some, some time frame for that? I don't want to make a rule that says yeah. it's going to be different for everyone, right? But yeah. I know for me personally, I felt the most confident in my career probably after I finished my first junior position. So that is about, I spent three years or two years in my internship. Then I spent another three years as a, my very first full-time job, which was still at my university. And then after that, I spent another year as a junior developer. So like a little bit higher than my first real job. So all in all, for me, that was about what, two, three, almost, almost like five years. And I only say that I felt confident is because it took all that time for me to understand how I how I learn, like what my learning pattern is. It mm. took that time to be put into different scenarios with different coworkers to, you know, you just need that experience. Like how do you deal with people who are difficult? How do you deal with senior engineers who don't think you're supposed to be there? How do you deal with negotiating your salary? Like all of those things you only learn 
in time. Like you cannot, mm. you can't force that. So it might be quicker for other people. You know, if you move jobs faster than I did, then yeah, you might learn that faster. That's why I don't want to put like, everyone is going to learn it in five years, but I think it just takes a certain amount of scenarios and experience before you feel confident in your own self. Like I, I didn't know everything, but at that point, I felt confident that whatever was thrown at me, I know that I could achieve it. I don't, I wouldn't know how long it took, but I know that if I put my head to it, um, I would be able to solve it. And that took some time for me to, to understand and believe that myself. So, yeah. So people don't get desperate. (laughs) You're going to get there, but it just takes time. And I think it's from every career is different. And in this particular one, you will find yourself um, learning by yourself a lot, I guess. I mean, you will always get a lot of information and a lot of knowledge from your colleagues and the, and the, the places that you're working in, of course, that's normal. But then you also find yourself um, researching a lot. So this is a career where it depends a lot on how um, I mean, your success or, or how quick your success comes also maybe depends a lot on how focused and disciplined you are as well. Because if you dedicate a lot of time to just going out and watching Netflix or something, and instead of just maybe also you could do that, but I mean, like if you dedicate too much to doing fun stuff instead of learning new things and researching, then you're going to get to your 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 goal maybe a bit later and it's okay but you just have to be proud <laughs> absolutely it's always a balance right any too much of anything is not good if you're 24 7 studying uh you know that's that's also not good you need to give yourself time some breaks but if you're also just partying and netflixing and redditing 24 7 then yes, you're not leaving yourself time to progress and learn and, um, you know, uh, make yourself better. So it's always, always, always a balance. It's, uh, you need to make sure you're devoting appropriate time so that each thing can, can grow your, yourself and then also uh, your social life or whatever it is you do for fun. Uh, it's always a balance. Yeah, have fun. It's fine. <laughs> and I also wanted to... Um, ask you if you had any books that you could recommend, like resources or websites or YouTube channels or courses online, um, just give advice or, or um, recommend resources out there that you have found. Sure, so I'll do my shameless plug first. I have a few. Um, <laughs> I think um, in general, actually, if you want to learn how to code, I actually think children's books are a really good way to like if you have no programming experience whatsoever Mm -hmm. and you are interested, I think they're a great resource because they are meant for someone with no programming background whatsoever. And I actually wrote a a kid's book called Coding for Kids Python. So if you're interested in learning how to code in Python, uh, I have that book. It's on like Amazon or whatever. We're going to put it in the description below so everyone can find it there. Awesome. And but yeah, there's a lot of kids books for other things, too. There's a really great book called uh, JavaScript for Kids uh, by No Starch Press. Um, I actually encourage people to check out just children's versions of programming. And then Mm -hmm. uh, if you understand it, if it's good for you, then maybe you can actually move on to the more beginner but adult level books. So that's a good introduction. Um, I also have a couple courses, uh, if you like video mm-hmm. courses. Um, I have some on LinkedIn Learning, and they're both actually very good for either um, a beginner and somewhat intermediate uh, developers. This is specifically now for cloud development. So the first course I created was um, developing Azure solutions. So if you are working in a company or you're just interested in learning how to develop software using Azure and using C Sharp, then I would highly recommend to view that course because what I've found with a lot of beginner courses is, yeah, they teach you how to code and then that's it. But there's so much more that goes into it. You're like, okay, I built this thing. What do I do now? How do other people use it? How do I deploy it and make it available to the world? And so 
this course was made uh, because I wish I had it when I was starting out in my internship. They were they answered a lot of questions that I had starting out about the bigger picture of software de development from code all the way to deploying it to production. And then yeah. uh, the other course I have also on LinkedIn Learning is um, the Azure Essential Training for Developers. So if you have no idea what Azure is, you're like, I think it's related to the cloud, but that's it. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is for you. This goes into um, essentially what is Azure? What are the different components in it? Yeah. Um, you know, what tools and services are offered? Everything that you would need to know as a developer and learning about Azure is that course. Now, those are just my courses. There's obviously a ton of courses that are out there. And then I guess the only other thing I would say is um, for books specifically, I would highly recommend the book Clean Code. I think that's on everybody's list as like a, that's like the ideal philosophy of how you should think about coding. But there are really, really good principles that are in there that I think every developer should know. And there's also um, two other books. Um, one of them is called The Design of Everyday Things. Uh, so maybe it's not development related, but it, it really changes the way you think. And it's very important to know uh, as a software developer because you not only have to learn how to code in uh, an ideal way for other developers, but you also have to build things that are actually useful for your users. The, the thing that you're building that other people will use, you have to keep them in mind too. <laughs> it's not just for you and it's not just people who are gonna admire your beautiful code. Um, if you're building something that other people will use, you need to keep them in mind. And the other book that was really a big influence for me is another book called Don't Make Me Think. So it's along the same lines as the design of everyday things, uh, but uh, don't make me think is more focused again on simplicity, like don't overcomplicate things. Um, and I, even though it's more design oriented and how you should build applications, I still think that applies to how you code as well. Um, don't overcomplicate things and yeah. better when you read it. I, I don't do it justice, but those are the books that were certainly very influential in my career and I think would help anybody that's learning how to um, learn, learning how to be a software developer. And then also you have your Instagram account, your social media where they can find you as well. And you have some blog uh, posts also on your website. So tell us a bit about that. <laughs> sure. So uh, lately it has been lacking. I posted an update. Um, but uh, yes, my Instagram is just my first name and last name. But if you follow me there, um, like I said, I'm currently now a senior developer advocate for MongoDB. So I am sharing everything you would possibly want to know about MongoDB. Um, and I like to use Instagram as my way of sharing that. Uh, you know, it can be difficult. Instagram is very photo heavy, right? So, but I really try to share educational content on there just because I think it would be more valuable there. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I'm actually pretty active on Twitter. Um, so whenever this is all over and I'm speaking at conferences again, I use Twitter very much to keep updated on you know where I'm going to be and if I shared anything lately or if our MongoDB uh, Twitch stream is going live, like everything will be shared through Twitter. That's probably where I'm the most active. So follow me there. And then mm -hmm. lastly, my, my blog um, is on my website, Adrian, adrian.io. I got lucky with that domain, but um, yeah, that needs to be updated um, as I'm sure as everybody. But now that pretty much done with um, preparing for a big conference, I should be getting back into all of those uh, forms of media. Fairly soon. Amazing. Yeah, great. Well, but I'm sure that they can find a lot of, of value there. And and what I think it's really good about you is that um you have been mentoring also um girls and, and well teenagers, not not only girls. So I guess um you really are into teaching others. You have your courses and you are also in 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 social media and in a way that you want other people to know what software development is all about and what you're all about. So 
it's not the same as just asking any software developer about their careers and but asking you that you are you already have this this desire to actually help others so i think it's amazing and please follow her she's great <laughs> and yeah adrian thank you so much for sharing with us all your knowledge for for giving us advice for i don't know being so open and nice um, to do this because like i said it's i really value people like you that are constantly wanting to help others to also achieve what they want to achieve and, and just achieve your goals so thank you so much absolutely thank you again for having me if it's if it helps even just one person overcome that hesitation then i will be very happy so i'm always glad to do this <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much everyone for watching for being here again and I, like i said if you have any questions you can comment below we're gonna leave all these resources that she was talking about we're gonna leave them in the description box and also her courses and everything her instagram account so don't worry you can find everything there and yet yeah, subscribe hit like hit the bell so you can be notified the next time that we have a video like this with her and many other people as well thank you so much again and bye bye